Welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, we're here to consider a draft notice of proposed rulemaking to establish a safety standard for clothing storage units. This proposed rule is intended to address the risk of injury associated with furniture tip-overs, particularly those involving children. As any caregiver knows, children will climb. This draft uh, proposed rule aims to ensure that the furniture we buy in our stores to, to that we buy to store our clothing will not tip over onto small children, uh, harming or killing them. This is not a theoretical problem that we're addressing. Between January 2000 and December 2020, CPSC staff has identified 226 fatalities associated with clo clothing storage units tipping over. It's 85% uh, children involved children's death and 10% involved seniors. This proposed rule has been in the works for a long time and too many families have suffered the loss of children due to tip overs. Recently, I talked to one mother who lost a child 17 years ago as a result of a tip over and has been fighting ever since to stop other families from suffering as she has. We owe it to her and other parents who have experienced loss and injured children to move forward quickly. And I wanna thank the CPSC staff for their work in this draft rule, um, proposed rulemaking and uh, including for our informational briefing last month. Um, during that briefing, we had many of our questions answered, but in accordance with our uh, decisional uh, making procedures, uh, we will allow for questions for staff regarding the proposal before us. We have several staff members present with us, are two members of our staff who briefed us on this proposal in December, uh, Dr. Kristen Talcott, project manager, division of human factors, uh, Director for Engineering Sciences, Meredith Kelsch, attorney in the Regulatory Affairs Division of the Office of General Counsel. Also in attendance are Mary Boyle, Executive Director, Lee Ray, the Executive Director for Operations, Wayne Boniface, Director of the Office of Hazard Identification and Production, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, the Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes for questions. After the questions are complete, we will consider any amendments. Once again, I remind everybody that while it's perfectly permissible to voice your personal opinions on legal issues, it's not appropriate to discuss any advice given to us by the Office of the General Counsel outside of the executive session. Uh, the legal advice received should remain confidential. Um, so going to questions for the staff, I don't have questions. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Bianco, do you have questions or comments? I do not, thank you. Commissioner Feldman. No questions, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Trumka? I have no questions, thank you. Um, hearing no questions, staff is excused, and we'll begin consideration of the package before us. Uh, I will now entertain any amendments to the draft proposed rule that is before us. I don't have any amendments. Commissioner Biacco, do you have amendments? I do not, thank you. Mr. Feldman, do you have any amendments? I do not, thank you. Mr. Trumka, do you have amendments? I do. I have two, um, and I will do them uh, one at a time. The the first is an amendment to reduce the risk of stockpiling CSUs, and the statute allows us to prohibit companies from stockpiling, which means that to substantially increase the import or manufacture of products between the promulgation date and the effect uh, effective date of the rule. Statute gives us discretion to define companies' base period of normal input, uh, normal import or manufacture volume, and then to determine what constitutes a significantly greater rate of import or manufacture compared to that normal volume. As drafted, the NPR allows each company to define its own base period by picking one year out of the last five when it had its highest import or manufacture volume and to increase that volume by 20% in the period between final rule and effective date. That would allow some companies to drastically increase import or manufacture in order to stockpile. The amendment selects a more reflective current import or manufacture volume by defining the base period as the one month out of the last 13 months with the median import or manufacture volume. And it changes the percentage increase that's allowed over that base period from 120% to 105% in each month between the final rule and the effective date. And I think this amendment will help reduce the risk of stockpiling products that could end up being sold long after the rule is supposed to be effective. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. second. 
Thank you. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of Commissioner Trumka's amendment. Uh, the commissioners will ask questions or provide any comments they have to the amendment, and uh, then we'll come back to Commissioner Trumka at the end. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes per round, the rounds if necessary. I'm going to start and recognize myself for five minutes. Um, Commissioner Trumka, you know, identified a a provision of the draft pros rule that uh, may not provide the most appropriate consumer protective path towards a safer marketplace. And we need to strike a balance between what's fair to the manufacturers, but end up prioritizing what protects consumers at the end of the day. Uh, so Commissioner Trump, I believe this is that should be fleshed out in the current process, and I support your amendment in order to do so, and I yield back the remainder of my time. Uh, Commissioner Biacco, do you have questions or comments? Um, no questions. Um, uh, Commissioner Trumka, thank you for presenting um, this amendment, which I must confess, um, I, it made me stop for a second. But after thinking about it and the overarching issue here that has been pending for just way too long, um, I, I support this amendment and we need to move forward. And as uh, the chairman pointed out, there are parents who have been suffering for you know 17 years. This is enough. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you. Uh, and Commissioner Trumka, I, I also want to thank you for introducing the amendment and, and, and raising uh, the issue of stockpiling. And I agree uh, that, that it makes sense right now to examine our anti-stockpiling provisions uh, to make sure that they're robust and effective in, in preventing abuses. The last thing that we want uh, is for firms to have an opportunity to go out and game uh, the, the, the system. And I view the NPR here as an opportunity to learn from stakeholders on the issue about whether or not our proposed anti-stockpiling provision is sufficient or, or whether it's not. Uh, I'm comfortable supporting the amendment today. Uh, I, I want to keep an open mind on the issue and acknowledge that some version of this language may make sense in a final rule, and, and, and perhaps it might not uh, if we ultimately get to that stage, depending on what we learn from the comments. Uh, so with, with that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, with that, um, are there any, there are no further questions for about Commissioner Trumka's amendment. Commissioner Trumka, did you have anything further to say on your amendment? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That we're going to move to a vote on the amendment. Uh, Commissioner Biacco. Uh, yes, please. Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes, thank you. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. That is four yeses. Uh, the amendment um, on stockpiling by Commissioner Trumka is adopted. Now, Commissioner uh, Trumka, you had a second amendment. Um, can you describe your for, amendment for three minutes and then we'll ask for a second? Thank you. Uh, yes, the, the second amendment uh, that I propose is to make the final rule effective 30 days after promulgation instead of 180 days. Uh, the NPR six-month delay in becoming effective is the longest delay the statute allows without special justification, and it represents a significant delay in the safety benefits of the rule. Here, that seems to very clearly mean the, that it could cost children's lives in that time period. So in that six months, what has historically happened, um, and the data that, that staff has compiled shows that every six months between 2006 and 2019, the U.S. averaged about 2,800 CSU tip-over injuries that sent people to the emergency room, and 72% of those were children. And every six months, between 2000 and 2020, there were an average of 5.4 deaths from CSU tip-overs, 85% children and 10% senior citizens. So if, if we issue a final rule, but then allow manufacturers and importers a grace period of six months not to comply with it, we would be failing to protect those people. Uh, from what we would have declared a known danger. It's, if a significant enough reason does exist to delay, I, I'm open to hearing that in the comment period and, and we'll closely review any comments that come back on that issue. Thank you, Commissioner Trumka. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, having heard a second, we'll now move to consideration of Commissioner Trumka's amendment. Other commissioners may ask uh, any questions or make comments with respect to the amendment, and then we'll come back to Commissioner Trumka at the end. Uh, each commissioner will have five minutes per round, and we'll have multiple rounds if necessary. And so I'll recognize myself for five minutes. And once again, Commissioner Trumka, you know, and thank you for proposing this amendment and raising, again, important questions about our historical rulemaking practices. 
Um, and I'll ask this is really a question whether we should default to lengthy periods for implementing uh, rules intended to protect children from a dangerous hazard. At the time, we all agreed to shorten the effective date for proposed rules on, under consideration that day. You know, as with the proposed rules we considered in December, this would be an important factor for us to look at in the government proceeding. Um, if there's sound reason to extend the time, then we should consider it. But our primary focus should be on the safety and protection of consumers, especially children. So I'll support this amendment and urge my colleagues to do the same and yield back the remainder of my time. Commissioner Biacco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Commissioner Trunka, thanks again for another um, well thought out amendment. Um, I think it's a very an aggressive amendment. However, this is not a shocker. Um, this issue is not gonna be a surprise to anyone. Um, th this has been around, as I pointed out, and we've all pointed out for, for a long, long time, there's been delay after delay. And for that reason, um, aggressive or otherwise, I'm gonna support it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you uh, again, uh, Commissioner Trump, for, for introducing this amendment. Uh, this issue of timing and effective dates is, is something that you've led on, and I think our previous rules on custom window coverings and magnets are, are stronger, I believe, uh, because of these changes. Um, in our rulemaking on custom window coverings, the, the commission shortened what would have been a two-year effective date to 180 days. In our rulemaking on magnets, we shortened the effective date to 30 days. Uh, for some context, our statute authorizes the commission to promulgate rules with effective dates that range from 30 days to up to 80 days or, or longer if warranted. Uh, but in the window coverings context, the shortened time frame made sense because the 180-day period is the outer limit of the statutory range. In magnets, the shortened time frame made sense because the commission uh, wasn't seeking a re-engineering of the product. Uh, but here, with respect to CSUs, what the commission is proposing is a significant re-engineering to improve safety. It's an aggressive standard, uh, and it would it involve the application of a new safety standard that doesn't exist in the U.S. or any other major jurisdiction, for that matter. Uh, and I, 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 I am open to the concept of shortening the, the time frame, and I'm not opposed to revisiting the effective date in the final rule. Uh, that said, I, I want to keep an open mind on the issue and, and review the comments first. Uh, if uh, comments are received that, that, that strongly support uh, uh, moving forward with a truncated effective date, perhaps this is something that we can revisit uh, uh, if and when we get to promulgating a, a final rule. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. Um, there are no other questions. Uh, Commissioner Trump, do you have any comments before we go to vote? No, you know, I, I appreciate the thoughtful consideration, and, and Peter, I, you know, I, I understand that point, and I too look forward to seeing the comments on this to see um, how quickly uh, companies can innovate in this space. Thank you, Commissioner. With that, we'll move to a vote on the amendment. Commissioner Piaco. I vote yes on the amendment. Commissioner Feldman. I vote no on the amendment. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. And I vote yes. So there are three yeses, one no. Commissioner Trumka's amendment is adopted. Are there any other amendments? Hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve the staff draft notice proposed rulemaking uh, for, uh, for CSU safety as amended and to direct publication of the same in the Federal Register. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. Um, for the final vote, Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So there are four votes to move forward with this uh, package. Uh, the motion to approve the staff's draft and as proposed rulemaking as amended uh, passes. And the proposed rulemaking as amended has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. Now we we'll can have up to 10 minutes for commissioner for closing remarks. I'm going to claim my time to keep it short. So first of all, I want to thank all the commissioners, thank all the staff for moving forward with this um, uh, rulemaking uh, proposal, which I think everybody has noted has taken far too long. Um, you know, please the commissioners vote to move forward with this um, proposed rulemaking. 
Uh, this proposed rule moves us closer to a marketplace that is safe for children and families, gets at uh, truly hidden dangers that furniture can tip over and crush small children. Kids are curious. And this proposed rule acknowledges that, ensures that dressers, we hope that you know, when we get to this, that dressers will not fall on children uh, when they're climbing up and trying to see what's on top of a dresser. Uh, I'd like to also note that in two weeks, um, we're going to be kicking off our annual anchor campaign, reminding Americans to always anchor their furniture and television to the walls. Um, while that's important advice, and will remain so, but we're making because the furniture can and should be designed to be safe. And I will uh, close by urging every segment of interested uh, public to submit comments. Today, we've taken an important step forward in the making process, and we look forward to hearing from individual consumers, consumer advocacy organizations, industry, and other interested parties. Uh, Commissioner Bianco, do you have a statement? Um, actually, um, I did, but you pretty much said everything I was going to say. So I'll second what you said. Um, I, I will say that the anti-stockpile uh, amendment, I think, is incredibly important because everyone knows that we um, see a lot of products out there that should not be out there any longer after we implement rules and so forth. So um, again, I want to focus on and uh, I thank the staff and the commissioners for seeing um, this through uh, and to give uh, people and parents and kids and everyone out there a little bit more peace of mind that um, that they should have had a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, didn't mean to, to take your your. <laughs> okay. Don't need to repeat it. For rearranging things at some point, uh, <laughs> Mr. Feldman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I want to start by thanking staff for the work that went into this proposed rule. Uh, as anyone who has reviewed the voluminous materials or, or watched our December informational briefing can attest, uh, there's just a lot of information and analysis regarding uh, uh, complex and technical issues that went into this. Um, I'm comfortable moving forward today with the NPR, but I wanted to also acknowledge the efforts that are underway at, at, at ASTM uh, in, in, that, in, in the relevant subcommittee. It is possible that stakeholders in the ASTM process will reach a consensus on a standard, and I hope that's the case. Uh, but if not, uh, I would encourage all stakeholders to work diligently to complete that work. Uh, if not, we have a backstop. As I said in December, uh, this rulemaking has gone on for far too long, and this is an issue that's been in front of the Commission uh, for too long. In fact, it's perhaps the longest ongoing and unresolved matter at the Commission right now. I want to uh, draw my colleagues' attention to uh, an article that came across my desk this morning. Uh, this is an Ann Landers column uh, from May 21st, uh, 20, uh, 2002, uh, involving uh, uh, a woman writing about the death of a child uh, and seeking safety advice. This is an issue that we've known about for years, uh, and probably even longer than, than, than since 2002. Uh, that is why Commissioner Biacco and I, as one of the first things I did when I got to this agency, was to sponsor an amendment uh, to offer uh, to, to CPSC's fiscal year 2020 operating plan to proceed with a mandatory standard here to address CSU tip over hazards. And that's also why I've been pushing to move this process along, and, and I share the frustration of many of the stakeholders uh, that, that this matter remains today un unresolved. Uh, hopefully we're moving a step forward today to, to changing that. And while it's a restatement of our statute, it's important to remember that where voluntary standards failed to protect consumers or the commission has reason to believe that there isn't uh, substantial compliance with a sufficiently strong standard, mandatory standards are appropriate. <sighs> Thus, in the absence of, of such a standard, uh, I believe it's important for the Commission uh, to move forward with, with, with this NPR and to solicit stakeholder input and hopefully to reach a consensus on a final rule. Um, again, thank you to the Chairman, uh, my colleagues and staff for all their work on this. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing this process advance. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we made a good decision today to move forward with the NPR process. And, and I, uh, again, appreciate everyone's thoughtful consideration of the matter. Uh, there's work ahead, and I look forward to us resolving it as quickly as possible. Thank you, Commissioner. Once again, thanks to all the staff and all of my fellow commissioners on the hard work on this package. 
Um, this concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And if I have a gavel, I'd gavel out. Thanks again, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you.